Hi everyone, my name is Alexey Arhipenko. Today I'd like to show you an example of using East-West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, a play edition of the library for the orchestra piece. As usual, you can listen to the piece using the link below the video or on my site. The link to the site is on the slide. The piece was created in Sibelius, then exported into MIDI, imported into Cubase, here is the track. It consists of three parts. The first is impressionistic, the second is staccato and tutti, then some staccatos, and at last some fulato. Here is the piece in Cubase. Each instrument has its separate track, except for the percussion, where all percussion is in a single track. Articulations are selected using the channels as usual, MIDI channels. So talking about the library, I should say that the East-West company uh, now uses its own engine called Play. It looks like this. It is very close to Contact. All the libraries that were created for Contact have been moved to this Play engine. And when the libraries were moved, they got some new features. In general, using Play Engine has an advantage that you always have one point of support uh, because East-West Company supports both the engine and the library itself. Here is the site of the library. This library is not new, but it is a good walking horse which gives a beautiful orchestra sound. I should say that this library is mother or father of many other libraries and uh, uh, in my comparisons with other libraries, I pay much attention to it. This library has three microphone positions for every sample, and uh, on the site you can listen to each of the microphones. Here is the stage mic. Surround. And close. All mics are very good. And the uh, important thing is that the price is pretty low. You can see that there are several editions of the library. Silver, Gold, Platinum and Platinum Plus. Silver edition is very limited. Gold edition is limited only in microphone positions and uh, it doesn't have 24-bit samples. And Platinum has everything except for the 16-bit samples. In this demo I will be using and showing the gold library which has all the articulations and instruments but only the stage mic. And you will see that in some situations it can be enough. Comparing to other libraries I should say that this library does not have the legato samples, I mean the transition samples between the notes, but it has a lot of articulations and a lot of effects, sometimes even more than the biggest contemporary libraries of the orchestra instruments. In my opinion this library is very good for different types of music and one of these types is active music where you don't have these legato transitions. As for the microphones I should say that this is very useful when you can change the balance between the microphones for example for moving some instruments forward adding the closed microphone or for example adding some bass sound some massive sound uh, using the surround microphones for example for the brass instruments let's return to the demo project now and I will talk a little about the differences between the previous versions of the library uh, that use the contact engine and the new version with the play engine there are several user interface modes here is the player mode where you can change uh, the current so currently selected articulation. For example, here are the articulations. They are all assigned to the different MIDI channels as in the previous version. For example, you can select the articulation, uh, change the sensitivity to the MIDI velocity. You can change the channel, transpose the instrument, change the minimum and maximum velocity, set the voice limit, and also choose the beat depth. So in this particular situation, using gold library, I do not have the 24-bit samples. 
Here is the panel that switches on the scripts that were added in the Play Edition. Using this new Legato and Portamento scripts allows you in some cases to create more realistic melody with Legato transitions that are emulated with the script, with the algorithm, not with the real recordings. So in this case, as usual, you overlap the notes and the instrument becomes monophonic so that only one note is sounding at each particular time. So if you start overlapping, then only this note will be sounding since this time. Portamento is an alternative version of the Legato script that adds some Portamento effect. I will show you in the violin section. You can switch on these scripts using the continuous controls, for example, the 65 continuous control switches the portamento, 68 switches the legato script, and uh, the fifth continuous control allows you to change the speed of the transition. These scripts have different effects on different samples, and you can try to use them not only for the legato, samples, legato articulations, but also for some different samples, for example, for sustain and some other. In this demo, I'm using the legato transitions only for the cool egg and legato samples. Also, you should understand that these scripts work only when overlapping the same channel, the same MIDI channel, the notes of the same MIDI channel, like here. Also, you do not need to overlap the notes, you just need to touch them, each other. This is very important because in many libraries you need to overlap the notes and uh, this is inconvenient because you need to stretch each note, for example, or to uh, do it in some batch way. The other important thing about these portamento and legato scripts is that they turn on the reverb and switch off the uh, release samples. By the way, you can see here that you can change the release and the main sample volumes. And this is all for these samples. But if you load some key switch samples, then you will be able to change the volume for these different key switches. So when you choose the portamento and switch it on, for example, then the reverb switch is on. This means that the sound becomes more reverberant. For example, like this. Important thing about this is that if you do not want this additional reverb, you should turn it off manually, because if you just turn off the portamento after playing with this, the reverb does not turn off. This is because the library understands that if it will turn the reverb on and off all the time, then the sound will be changing, and uh, this will be not very natural. The next script is repetition script. Here in the manual you can see what the, the script does. The settings for the script are different for different articulations, but the three main things that it does is poros the other notes and changes, retunes them to the pitch that you need. This is very close to the neighboring round robins that are very popular, for example, in the uh, Spitfire libraries. Also, the script can start a note a tiny amount before or after the specified start time, and it can detune the sample a few cents, high or lower. All these changes can help to change the sound the way that it will not so sound like repeating for the repeating notes. Uh, on the other hand, it can change the timbre of the sound and uh, this can be a problem if you, for example, have some very exposed part and uh, in this part the instrument sounds very distinguished and standing out and the listener can hear this changing of the timbre. So you should use these repetition scripts for some particular situations, for example, when a lot of instruments are playing and uh, uh, you want to add some uh, 
additional realism. For some instruments this script sounds especially good and uh, for them you just do not need to hide the script. The other new feature in the Play Edition is the double samples uh, or double articulations. These articulations are like this, for example, sustain and legato. Uh, when you use these articulations, if you play disconnected notes like this, then the sustain articulation fires. But if you play the connected or overlapping notes, then the legato articulation plays. Also, you can hear that overlapping can change the sound a little bit without overlapping. You should remember this and always check what you get, what sound you get. By the way, I should say that the manual of the library is very good and thorough. Uh, it is 121 page and uh, there are a lot of Advices that you can use, for example, for choosing some different microphones or articulations. The other new thing that was added in the Play Edition is the Short Script. The Short Script is the thing that helps you to decrease the number of channels that you use for the short articulations. So you can use just the one channel, and in this channel you will choose different articulations, connecting or disconnecting the notes, or choosing the modulation wheel. Each of sub-articulation in this big patch will have the round robin and this will help to reduce the machine gun effect. So this can be convenient although I do not use it in demo and also it can help you to reduce the number of MIDI channels that you're using and then use these channels for example for them effects for, for some effects. Now the play engine is sensitive to the pitch wheel or the pitch band wheel. For example, you can see that in the violin I use some bend down. And also here the bending up. It is very subtle but it can add realism and release the machine gun effect. On my site in the article section I have an article about this library although the article is written about the East-West uh, contact edition but in many cases it is very useful for example one important thing is using some map of channels for each instrument you will have several articulations and uh, I suggest that you use some map. For example, I usually use the first MIDI channel for the Kuleg or Legata samples, the second and third MIDI channels for the expression and crescendos, four, five, and six for staccatos, and so on. For the play edition, this is important that you first choose your map, then load your articulations in the order that, in the signing order. Because as far as I understand, there is no way to change the order of the articulations and uh, uh, that's why you should use it at the beginning. Okay, now I will show how each instrument is tuned. This is the flute and you can see that the flute starts with the effects. The first sample is 16th channel. It is the uh, run up. The second sample is whole tone trill and you can hear that the first sample is not sensitive to the note and ending. You can understand that when you press the articulation, press the note for example with your mouse, you can hear that it stops when you release the mouse button. For example here. But in this case the sample is always played to the end. This is the type of the samples that are not sensitive to the note ending and usually these samples are effects. In this case it is not important how long the sample is. This or this long. 
Anyway, it will start playing from the beginning of the node and then finish when there is end of the sample itself. So in this case, it is important to align the first and the second sample so that there is no gap and so that the trill does not start before the run finishes. Like this. If I start the trill later, then there is a gap. And if I start the trill before this time, then you hear that the trill starts before the run finishes. Okay, then there are legato samples. There is some accent. And uh, this is the sixth channel, which is for Xander. And you can see that when these samples overlap, when these nodes overlap, uh, there is legato script running. So this comes out as monophonic. But in this particular case, the nodes overlap, but they are from different channels. So there is no monophonic and this node does not finish to sound. By the way, when you need to stop all the nodes, can press stop all voices. So in this case this note continues to sound because it is a different channel and if it were longer then you will hear it. I have overlapped this because I wanted an increased release in this case because for Xander plays like an accent and then piano note. Like this. So there is a very subtle effect, but you should understand that only notes of the same MIDI channel are subject to the monophonic legato script. Okay, then there is a run with the notes using legato. And the last node is created using the effect of the 11th channel, which is the grace node. So in this case, the grace note starts before the trill and also is aligned with the trill so that when the grace finishes, the trill starts. And also you can see that the grace is longer. But let's try if it is important. You can see that the length of this note is also not important. So this effect is not affected by the note length, by the note endings, okay. Okay, now then there is some effect. In this case, the effect is also not sensitive to the note ending. One more important thing here is that I switch legato before the legato starts to play. I do it with the continuous control 68. And the also important thing is that I do it on the first, first channel. You can see how it works. Here the legato script turned on. Okay, let's go on. Here's the cutters. Start. In this case I do not use the legato samples. I use the tenth channel, which in my case is non legato. Non legato has a more active accent, and in this case I need a more active sound. One more important thing here is that I choose the short samples with the channels, but I already said that there is one more new way to choose this using the short scripts. I didn't use them here. And in the end, I use the frullato effect. You can hear that the transitions between the notes are good without using any legatos or overlapping like this. So you just do not need it. but you can make it shorter. 
In some cases it sounds better. Let's go to a boy now. Here it starts with staccatos. And you can see that the repetition script is turned on. Especially for the fourth channel which is staccato. You see it here? Then there is a glissando, a short glissando to the next note. And in this case, glissando is sensitive to the length of the note. So I set these notes the way that the transition from one note to other is barely audible, but anyway you can hear it. The other way that you can use is just to remove this sample and just extend this one. But when you use two samples, I added some dynamic change. Sometimes you do not need uh, this uh, additional noise. In this case, you can remove this sample. But here, a lot of instruments are playing and this is not audible. Then there is legato, but legato without any legato script in this case. By the way, the reverb is turned off because I did not switch the legato on on this instrument any time. So this is plain legato like in the older version in contact. And then there is a long note. It is so long that it fades out naturally. It means that the musician finished playing this note and the note is not cycled. So, I mean it is not looped. So it is it played at natural dynamic change changes. And this sounds very good. So I use this natural release because nothing can compare to it really. Then I use some more active samples, staccatos, and uh, this is number eight, Swazanders. You can hear that these notes have different lengths. Although initially in the score they were similar, I mean the same length. This note length change was introduced during the setting up the samples in the digital audio workstation, in this case in Cubase. I did it to simulate the real groove that a musician can create with changing the length of the notes without changing the positions of the notes, so without changing the rhythm. This is very important for the groove and this removes the machine gun effect. Very good. In this case, uh, some notes become longer and some notes become shorter. And uh, in this case, there is a group of two notes two lengths that is repeated, but there can be a group of three lengths, for example, and so on. I use only a group of two lengths. Okay, now I use a more complex approach with many articulations because I add legato here. So the legato is added when the note is long and uh, it does not finish fast. For example, there is no staccato first and then it can be changed into the legato articulation. You can hear that uh, there is some timbre change here. Uh, it is not very good, but in this case uh, the instrument is doubled with the string, in this case I think the second violin, and this sounds okay. 
also there were two other instruments of playing so in this case this timber change is not very audible but anyway you should be aware of this change some articulations have a little bit different timber than the other maybe you can increase the uh, midi velocity in some cases and uh, bring the timbers closer The other thing that you can change to decrease this machine gun effect uh, is to alter the midi velocity of the notes. For example, having a group of two velocities like here, for example, like here, so these two velocities repeat. I mean that the, each second note has a decreased velocity. In this case, it stresses the upbeat, and this sounds more natural. Here is another example of uh, setting up several notes, a phrase. Uh, this approach is that the first note is some non legato sample with attack, for example, maybe without attack, like an expression sample. Then there are some legato samples, in this case there is one legato sample. And then the last note can be set as staccato. Usually no other notes inside the phrase can be set as staccato because after staccato you usually cannot use the legato sample if you use legato sample there is some push that is created due to the fact that legato samples are cut at the beginning and attack is cut from them so you should not use the legato samples without some other sound of the instrument playing at this at the time when the legato sample starts In this case, you can also alter the MIDI velocity, for example, to stress the upbeat. Also, in this case, you can do it. Here is a slow. It is the 13th channel. Race note. You can hear, you can see that they overlap, but this sample it is the eighth channel, so it's under. It is not very loud, so this overlap does not sound bad, but generally you usually decrease the length of the notes if there is some other note or effect like this so that you do not get the uh, situation when uh, you when it sounds like several instruments are playing at the same time in the end there are several repeating notes short notes and in this case, it is important that round robin is turned on, so you choose the articulations that have round robin in them. In this case, I use the fourth channel, it is staccato with three round robins. And also, the repetition script is turned on, so you can hear that there is some timbre change. In this case, timber change is very audible, but there are a lot of instruments of playing here and also it is not very audible in the mix. Let's go to the clarinet net now. It also starts with the run. It is a long run. 16th channel, octave run, octave run. But in this case, the run finished at the F note. 
and then the trill starts at the G node. In this case, you do not want the last node of the run to be aligned with the first node of the trill. You just need to put the trill some space that is close to the speed of the run. Like this. There is also an example of legato without the legato script. The run that is created the same way that in the boil, but without the... I mean like in flute, but without the legato script. In this case, only legato notes are used, and they do not overlap. You can see it. Also, you can see that these notes overlap. Generally, you can delete this note. But in this case, the timbre changes very abruptly. So, just uh, by leaving this note here, you have the timbre, timbre of the track more stable. But in this case, you have to understand that it sounds like, the two, like two players are playing. So this is more like maybe DJ or some sound engineer. So this approach is not just like natural orchestra sounding. If you wanted some natural orchestra sound, maybe you delete this or maybe delete this. Then one more interesting thing is that the trill finished with one more note that is not very loud. The velocity of the note is lower than the previous note. This is made to create some sort of a release of the trill. Sounds like this. So there is the, the, the final note that is a little bit extended quietly. Then there is the effect. Some more active music. By the way, here you can hear the portato samples. And uh, one very important thing about this is that the uh, fade out in time. For example, it is very audible here. Also, an important thing is that you have three samples of the same note here, and there is no round robin. Generally, you usually want to decrease this, and uh, in this case, you can replace these notes with, for example, staccatos. Maybe in this case, you can. Leave it here, replace with staccato, and in this case, oh, there is no fifth channel. In this case, there is uh, one more problem. When we return to this note, there is round robin, but these round robins are much closer to each other than the notes of the other samples, of the other articulation. In this case, you also have some sort of machine gun effect. Okay. Okay, so one different way is to choose the sustain, some sustain sample with attack. Decrease it.
This is too loud. And you can hear that in some cases changing velocity a very little bit can change sound greatly, like this. Uh, this is the result of great variation between the different dynamics of the same note that was played by the musician. And uh, even changing the uh, velocity, the volume of the note with some mixing techniques, it can be brought to the other note that was played with the greater dynamics. You can face this problem when you use trumpet or maybe some other brass instrument, but uh, if you do not use some velocity randomization techniques, then it is easily coped with. You just do not want to reach the uh, level where the dynamics will be changed greatly. Or usually you can reach this level and do not come back. Now let's look at the bassoon. So the same he thing here, staccatos, then some sustains with attack, and then legatos, staccatos again. In this case, variation is, I think, too much although it mimics the double tone. The part starts with Lissandra, 14th channel, that is merged with the expression. And you can hear the effect of expression. If I did not use expression, then uh, there would not be that dynamic change. In this case, I also do not use the legato scripts. Uh, here I use uh, natural release and then effect. Trill. Okay, this part is not tuned yet. I will tune it later. So when I do not tune the part until I tune it, it is usually in the first channel so that I can listen to the whole piece, listen to all the instruments, uh, to understand balance. Of course, uh, they are not balanced this way. So the, there, are, there are no attacks usually uh, so legato attacks are strange and so on, but generally uh, you can hear some harmony, melodic changes and so on. So my approach is to set all the instruments to legato sustained patches in the beginning. And then set all the articulations. Let's see the trumpet. Here are some legatos. No, there are no legatos, just sustain articulations. In this case, you can start with a sustain articulation because it is not legato and it is not cropped in the beginning. Then there is effect. With the natural release, by the way. And then there are phrases set up with different articulations. You can see that to match these different articulations I use different dynamics, different MIDI velocities, because this sustain articulation is a little bit quieter than this seventh channel portata articulation. By the way, it is double articulation, portata legata but there are no connected notes, so this channel always sounds like portata. But if I added one more, 
note, then it will sound like legato. It's not very... Okay, let's do this. Sounds like this. Also, you see that I decrease the velocity of downbeat notes. Let's look at the horn. It starts with expression, by the way. And ends with three second marcata. The same thing. By the way, also natural release. Then some effects. Then some active phrases. Like this. And then a phrase that starts with staccatos and then finish with legatos. Uh, you also can hear the timbre change here. Although there are the same instruments. Sometimes instruments are changed. For example, there was a six French horn instrument and then there was solo French horn, but in this case there are always six French horns. Trombone with beautiful expression and natural release. Expression, I mean effect. Then active phrases. So these timbre changes, they sound like different musicians. And generally in an orchestra it is okay. Maybe the melody line is divided between several musicians. Tuba. Sustains and expressions with natural release. DXF. It is a dynamic crossfade that is controlled with a MIDI uh, continuous control one or modulation wheel. So the the greater the value of the continuous control, uh, the more volume is given to the loud articulation. In this crossfade. By the way, you can read more about this in my article about the East West Symphonic Orchestra. Here are the active phrases. Okay, now percussion. Talking about percussion, I can say that it is very convenient to use a single track for percussion. Uh, in this case, I set the percussion the way that some instruments that are very close to each other but are separated into different articulations uh, have the same MIDI channel. Uh, but the important thing about this is that they have different playing zones here so that they do not overlap. In this case, when you press here, you sound, uh, and uh, when you press here in the first MIDI channel, you sound this articulation and you press here, you sound this articulation. Then there is a second channel of three snares, the same zone cross here. And um, the third channel is the bass drum and the fourth channel is cymbals. So in this case you can hear the pre-recorded drum roll. Also there are drum rolls that are controlled using the mod wheel. But of course, the natural drum rolls with crescendo sound better. So when you can use them, it is usually better to use the pre-recorded drum roll crescendo with the pre-recorded dynamics, like here. Also, I use the round robins like this. So it is left and the right hand. 
So these round robins are manual because the each node does not have round robin inside it. So to have round robin you need to alternate between the two nodes. And here the magic starts. So we have a bass drum roll here. Also there is a drum roll crescendo. Here is another snare drum roll crescendo. And then everything finishes here. So important thing is that these rolls uh, need to finish at the moment that uh, this sample strike. Because if you move them later or before, then there will be no alignment and this will be not this will not sound rhythmically. But you can see that this sample is longer than the drum roll uh, sound sample. Uh, this is because in the sample not just the drum roll is recorded but also the release of the drum roll. Uh, this means that the musician plays a drum roll and then the microphone just records what happens next. It's just the release of the drum roll just the sound that reverberates uh, in the hole. So if you finish it before, for example here, then the sound will be cut and there will be some strange release sample sounding because the computer doesn't know uh, what is the place here and what uh, release sample needs to be sounding here. So this is the same problem uh, or maybe not just problem, this is the same situation with the natural releases like in the long pre-recorded releases in expression samples and so on. So in this case you just need to increase the length of the sample to hear the full release. It sounds like this. By the way, uh, it is not short enough, not long enough to increase it. You hear that uh, it sounds a little bit strange, so some sound is cut off. Maybe like this. And you also can increase the length of these samples too. You can download the scripts that will help you to do it with uh, simple mouse clicks from my site. Okay, now here are the cymbals and the bass drum. Okay, that was about the percussion. Let's see the violence. I already talked about these pitch changes at the beginning of the lectures. Here you can also see that the type of the legato changes. But let's start from the beginning. Here is some 16th channel with which in this case is whole tone trill. In my opinion, these transitions better sound in non legato. That is why I added some silence between them. Here is the slow. That is aligned with the next sample. Expression. And then, let's see. In the play mode, which script is selected? So this is the Portamanta script selected at first. Portamanta. So Portamanta plays. And then in this place, Legato switches on. And Portamento switches off. 
I did it because the legato script sounds better when the instrument is exposed. So in, in this case there was no exposure because a lot of instruments were playing and in this case uh, there is more exposure because little instruments are playing. Okay. Uh, also interesting thing here is using uh, continuous control 11 which controls expression. Expression in this case is just the uh, control of the output volume of the track uh, of the sample. It is not shown here, but just the volume is decreasing. So this can help you to, for example, uh, create the XF dynamic crossfade of the samples that do not have it. You can just decrease the dynamics of some samples, but you should be aware of the fact that if you just take, for example, some musician playing and then just decrease uh, the recorded sound on the mixer, then it can be uh, sounding like maybe fade out, but not like diminuendo, because uh, the musician will continue playing uh, in the style of, for example, forte or mezzo forte, and uh, and the listener will understand that there is not just a musician playing uh, quieter, but the mix playing quieter. This is the case. Uh, in this in this place, uh, it is not audible, so um, it is okay. And also, there are other instruments playing. And uh, this sounds okay, so you can just decrease the volume, and for some samples it works. So here is a more active phrase, using some different articulations. The second violin, with a slow... Also in the second violin you can see that the velocity is changing in waves. Uh, and uh, there are two instruments here that have waves. It is the viola and the second violin. You can see that in place where the midi velocity of the second violin is minimum, in viola it is maximum. So this uh, comes into the passing the music from the group of violins to the group of violas, like this. like this. Also you can see that I changed the articulation although the line uh, is the same. And also you can see that when I change to some more quiet articulations I decrease the length of the staccatos like here and here so that the change more gradually. These are not staccatos, but they are um, very expressive. Okay, let's see the violas. In the violas there is uh, one more dynamic dynamic crossfade, but in this case it is not the just the dynamic crossfade. It is a crossfade of different uh, styles of playing, different articulations. This is the tremolo, which goes from the sul ponticello to the normal tremolo. This is a very interesting effect, but you should understand that it does not change the dynamics. This is the name of this articulation. Okay, and also there is one more articulation playing at the same time, 
more quietly uh, and uh, also this 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 is not very natural for an orchestra so if you want to come closer to an orchestra maybe you will remove this one or this one because when they sound at the same time they will create a sense of two groups of musicians playing okay But in this place, the violins are not playing, so this can count as, for example, violins. Okay. Then there are active phrases. By the way, violas are very loud in the symphonic orchestra, I mean in the East West symphonic orchestra, you should remember this cellos start with staccatos then hard vibrato sustains Okay, now here. Here's the portato. And then Silpunto Cello Tremolo. Then Staccatos. And some active phrases will get us inside. Then potato legatus. By the way, in this case, this will sound like potato, and this like legato because there is an overlap. This like potato again, legato, potato, legato, and so on. So, so there is a double pitch, and the double bass. By the way, this is legato tremolo without the script. Then the, there are expressions mixed with sustains and potatoes, switzanders. You can hear that these expressions have very long uh, attacks and, uh, and sometimes you do not like it and you need to, for example, uh, align the attacks like this. So this is better if you need just some attack here. But uh, the disadvantage of this is that you will get uh, some sound of some different instrument here. This can be audible, like two instruments are playing at the same time, or two groups. Uh, here I show how you can change the sound of the instrument gradually, if you do not have the dynamic crossfade, if, and if you do not want to change the output volume. In this case, you can just put several notes successively and then uh, change the uh, velocity. This will sound like the bow change. But of course, this can be a little like machine gun, so 
these samples repeat. So this can be a problem in some, some situations, but not here because here a lot of instruments are playing. Okay, you now some active phrases with quartetos and staccatos. Then quartetos. These notes are more susceptible to machine gun effect because they are repeating and they are the starting of the phrase. So you can just turn them into staccatos. So I will repeat that important thing when working with East West Symphonic Orchestra is to start your phrases with the articulations that are not cut in, in the beginning, like for example legato articulations that are more suitable for second, third and so on notes. In some cases, due to the fact that uh, uh, accent times of different articulations and different instruments is different, uh, you will need to move uh, some notes forward and or backward just to uh, meet uh, the uh, same place in time where all the accents will sound at the same time. But this is not a big problem of this library. This is more the problem of more contemporary libraries. Don't forget about non-legato. So if you cannot achieve a good legato sound or the legato sound that you want, you always can use some non-legatos. Or for example, you can even use some uh, expression articulations and uh, put them with gaps between them okay also if you use gibbridge then I recommend that you set this run in existing aux cost if you do not use this then uh, there can be problems or errors let's talk a little bit about mixing and mastering now Important thing here is that I do not change the output volume of the tracks. Uh, because when you change the output volume, this can be sounding like some sound engineer playing with the knobs or something like that. Uh, the best way, of course, is to change the MIDI velocities, which will instruct the musicians to play uh, with the different dynamics. And also you can use dynamic crossfades, which will reveal uh, some dynamics as you change the crossfade. As for the violins, in this library, both violins, 18 violins and uh, 11 violins that are usually used for the second violins, they are both panned to the left. So this means that if you want a mirroring orchestra plan, uh, then you can do like this. First, you need to find your track, for example, by soloing the second violin. Then you can press stereo dual panel and uh, move the right channel to the left and the left channel to the right. So this way you will just uh, flip the stereo in the second violin so they, they will go to the right. Uh, this way the first violin will be at the left and the second violin at the right. Also if you want to know where are the different channels, where, where, where is the instrument panned, you can just open the instrument and uh, look at the central microphone because the central microphone was recorded near the musician and uh, uh, in the setting of the library uh, the central microphone is always panned accordingly to the panning that is pre-recorded in the frontal and the surround stage and surround microphones. Uh, in my case I 
I cannot uh, switch these microphones because I have the gold edition. Uh, but you should understand that uh, this is the setting for uh, particular articulation. For example, for each articulation you have this setting and you can uh, bring some articulations, uh, for example, more to the central microphone uh, or to the surround microphones, but uh, remember that in, if you use it inside the phrase that then this can uh, bring some uh, strange sound distortions, some uh, changes in microphones, okay. This is the output volume and panning of the articulation, tuning, reverb and so on. And the last thing that I did to the track is added a limiter. It is the fog filter and you can see that I kept the orchestra dynamics. You can see that this is pretty quiet and the end is also very quiet and also only in this place in the middle where there is 2T only in this place the sound comes to the limit. This is how the waveform of the track looks like and you see that the limiting is very very subtle. Okay, thank you for listening and I'm waiting you in my future videos.